Hello everybody and welcome to my knitting podcast, Unwind and Knit With Me. My name is Lisa and I'm coming to you from Christchurch, which is the South Island of New Zealand. And this is my little place where I talk about my knitting, um, yarns, patterns, everything uh, yarn and knitting related. So if you are a returning viewer, welcome back and thank you. If you are new to my channel, um, also welcome. I hope you enjoy the content. Um, please subscribe if you have not already. Um, that helps me and my channel. Um, and sit back and enjoy the next hour or maybe hour and a half. Um, another chatty episode with me, with Unwind and Knit with me. So this is episode 47 and today is Thursday, I need to get my book, <laughs> today is Thursday the 28th of September. I think I should just know what date it is but wow hasn't it gone quickly. Um, it's a busy time because um, in a two week period we have Father's Day, my husband's birthday and then my daughter's birthday. Um, so it's a busy time but also once we've had my daughter's birthday for me, it's like, well, the next step's Christmas. So, hey, it won't be too long and we'll be talking about our Christmas knits. Um, here in the Southern Hemisphere in New Zealand, um, we are in spring. And I have to say the first probably 10 days was outstanding. I got in the car and I cleaned up all the winter mess. Um, and now it's just gone back to winter. <laughs> Yesterday, I think we had a high of nine degrees. So we went from sort of having 22 down to nine. And today I think it's getting to 14, but it's very gray. It's quite depressing looking out there. <laughs> but anyway, we are in spring, so summer's on its way for us here. Um, everything I talk about on my podcast, I leave show notes for, and I also leave links to everything. So any patterns I discuss, I leave the Ravelry link for you to go over and have a look if it interests you. I leave links to yarn, whether it's my yarn or someone else's. Um, and yeah, so anything I talk about, I leave the links for. You can also follow me on Instagram, as I'm winding it with me, and Facebook. I'm winding it with me but we also have a community page and that really excites me I think we're close to 800 in that group now and that's a really neat little space where you can actually share with me what you're doing um, but also there's so much knowledge in that community so if there's anything you're not sure of or if you've got questions um, feel free to post in there and I'm sure somebody will have the answer for you um, because you're talking about 800 people that have probably been knitting for 20 years plus. Um, it's a real lot of experience. So that group really excites me. So um, please jump over and join that group. You will get asked three admin questions and a moderator will go um, and approve. It's a very basic, straightforward process. But yeah, join us over there on our community Facebook group. Um, that's all the admin -y stuff. I've got, I've got a lot, quite a bit to get through. What I did want to say is uh, last weekend, my husband and I went away for his birthday. And the funny thing is we only went an hour, less than an hour out of Christchurch um, to a place called Wind Whistle. And there's a farm there, a working um, sheep farm. But they have a cottage on there that they rent out through, might have been Glamping or Book a Batch, one of those sites. And yeah, we spent a couple of nights there and they have, I think it's like a hundred square kilometers, don't quote me on that, um, of native forest. So there was a lot of bird life and it was really pretty. Uh, but what I wanted to share with you is it snowed. Um, this was this southerly blast that came through and I think we're still on the tail end of, and they predicted snow um, in the Canterbury area to four or 500 meters. And I've got some video and I will pop that in at the end. Uh, we don't see snow here very often. It certainly snows um, through the Southern Alps where the ski fields and that are. But here in Christchurch, we're sea level. So very rarely we see snow. So that was a real hoot. And I will put that at the end of this podcast. Um, yeah, I'll share some of that video with you. Okie dokie. 
let's get into what I'm wearing. I do have a finished object. Um, I have worn this before. This is a jersey that I've probably had now for five or six years. Um, the reason I wanted to wear it is because I've restocked the yarn and I want to talk about it because it's one of my favourite colours and my favourite yarns. But um, the pattern is Coquille by uh, Marie Green from Olive Knits. So that's the pattern there. Now I bought this, um, it's 2019, so that's when I would have bought it when it got published. And Libby Johnston um, collaborated with Marie Green and they produced this Pacific Knits, the Oceanic, Oceanic Collection. I'll show you the cover. So for those that you don't know, um, Libby Johnson, also known as Truly Myrtle, that's her here, is a Kiwi designer. And Marie Green, uh, I'm really sorry. I think she might be from Canada, but I'm not sure. Canada or America. She's from the other side. <laughs> um, but they collaborated and they produced this and it's got beautiful patterns in it. And I bought it um, and I actually loved it so much. I went and had it printed and bound. So that's what I'm wearing, Coquille. So it's done in a fingering weight yarn. And I've done mine in a colour. I'm just going to see if you can see that. There's a bit of lace work, a small panel of lace work there. Um, let me set my camera back up now. Um, I love the ne neckline. And it's just stockinette stitch with a two by two rib um, for the band and the bottom. Where's my ball of yarn? Here it is here. Um, so any four ply fingering weight yarn, a friend of mine set it in a sock yarn and it was uh, really lovely. This one here is um, High Twist Merino. It's local here and it's milled here and it's dyed here. It is an indie dyed yarn, so really important that you alternate your skeins because there can be variations. Um, I've talked about the helical method for alternating skeins, but um, that's under my label, and why didn't it with me? But you can see the high twist in that. It's just a really beautiful yarn. There's very little pilling or fluffing, and there's beautiful stitch definition. So, um, yeah, denim is one of my favourite colours. Uh, I've got another pattern that I'm going to talk about that I've also chosen wool for, which is a denim blue. Um, but yeah, it's one of my favourites is blue. So that's the Coquille by Marie Green, and that was knitted up in dark denim. On my website, that's listed as Merino High Twist. I think this is about 10 colours. Um, I've already sold half my last order, so there's not a lot left. There's probably enough for a couple of jerseys. But if you're interested, that's that. And I'm just going to get my coffee. <laughs> okay, I have one finished object to share with you. Um, I'm very excited about it because I love it. So it's the Kuta Top by Sari Nordland. It's the pattern there. This is the second pattern I've done of Sari's. I did her Kuta Tee, which is a short sleeved um, one, very similar. That's it there. And I knitted mine up in the high twist that I'm wearing now um, in the color Vegas Lights, which is um, a pink purple speckle. So I'm going to show it to you. But what I have to tell you before I showed it, show you, so the back and the front lace panels are knitted separately and then you join them together and do the body. And in the lace panels, I did not alternate skeins. And I should have because I've got quite a colour variation, but I'm actually really happy with the colour variation because it looks like a fade. So I'll share that with you. And the other thing that I need to tell you is... I got my daughter to film me wearing this top. So after I've spoke about it, I will insert a photo of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like completed. But here is my completed um, kuta. So you can see here there's a real subtle speckle and then when it comes down, it comes down into quite um, 
quite a darker speckle. But like I said, I'll, you'll see it on. I'm actually really happy with it. So the back and the front lace panels that you can see there, they are identical. So you knit one and you knit two and then you join it together. So, and then once you've joined it together and finished, you do this I-cord edge. See it there, which is just a really beautiful finish. And the wee shoulder strap is also I-cord. It's all I-cord down the C, down the um, sleeve. And then that's it. And then when you get to the bottom, you change to your, no, you don't. You go to the bottom, when you're happy with the length, you do one row of pearl and then you do 10 rows on a, on your smaller needle and to finish it, you sew that hem. So it's quite nice because it feels like it's a bit weighted and you'll see that when I wear it, it actually hangs like it's got quite an A-line and it, it just sits perfectly. So, and I think that's the purpose of that folded in hem, that it gives it a little bit of weight. Um, I, I love it. it. It feels really good on. The fit's really good. I actually went up a size. So I normally sit at about a size four. I did a size five because I wanted this to be drapey. I didn't want it to fit. You'll see that one, how Sari's got it. There's not, there's no positive ease in that. It's quite fitted. I wanted it to be I wanted it to, to have just a little bit of positive ease, so I went up a size and really happy I did that. As as normal, you can try it on as you go, which I did. There's a little bit of A-line shaping in it, so a couple of deep, sorry, increases. I think there might be three or four. I only did two because I didn't feel like it needed to come out too much. But I did try it on a couple of times as I went. Um, so really happy with it. I, sorry, I didn't weigh this, I should have. But that's what I have left out of two skeins. So this is, um, each skein is 400 metres. So seven to 800 metres um, is, well, I'm not sure what's left. <laughs> but you... If you're doing up to a size five, even a size six, you will get that out of two skeins, um, two 400 meter skeins. Um, and it's just a beautiful little top. Um, it'll be a lovely wee piece in my wardrobe. I've got a friend that's also knitting at the moment, but she is doing it in a cotton. Um, I actually don't like knitting with cotton. I don't like it on my hands, but I can certainly see why you would for a summer top. Um, and hers looks beautiful. It's got nice stitch definition and yeah. But anyway, so I that's what I did mine in. I just dropped the wool. I think it was called Vegas Lights. Yeah, Vegas Lights. I used two skeins. The other thing I did, um, and I spoke about it in my last podcast, but I did the provisional cast on using my stitch on hold cords way way easier like you've really got to try that technique um on youtube if you just put in provisional cast on with barber cords by island yarn that's the tutorial that i recommend for doing a provisional cast on with your stitch on hold cords and i will leave the link for that below because it's a i mean a lot of patterns now require it a um, provisional cast on and for me that's the one I'm going to go to every time yep so yeah provisional cast on <laughs> um I mentioned this in my last podcast as well because in my last podcast it was a whip um what I did have to do is check out a couple of tutorials because there's a lot of yarn overs um in between knitting and purling and I'd actually forgotten how to do a yarn over when you're going from a knit to a purl or a purl to a knit. Um, so, yeah, I just YouTubed um, how to yarn over after a purl or how to, you know, how to yarn over before a purl. And it was very pink knits tutorial that, um, that I used. So, yeah, it sounds very basic, but I think with most patterns now, for me personally, 
with most patterns there is always one or two things that I have to go and check the tutorial just to make sure that I've um, on the right track and that I'm doing it correctly because there's so much more techniques out there now than what we used when our grandmothers taught us like 40 50 years ago 50 years ago wow um so that's my kuta top really happy with it i would definitely say an adventurous beginner if you've done a little bit of lace work you'll be fine there's so many tutorials on how to do the i cord um the i cord cast off really easy once you watch the tutorial but yeah probably a, an adventurous beginner or a beginner that's got a bit of experience with lace work so that's my finished object i thought i just would mention i've got it here in my notes one of my customers had a set of her chalgu tips confiscated at an airport i can't remember what airport it was it might have been new caledonia but what she'd said to me so i the reason i'm telling you this is because i did have to order her in um some three inch tips to replace the ones that were confiscated at the airport and she said she left here on air new zealand no problems but at the other end is where they confiscated them what i have found with my travel is that it's got nothing to do with the airline so what and it's got nothing to do with even the airports they're never consistent because it depends on what security level that airport is at sometimes they let you through with them and sometimes they don't i always travel now with bamboo tips never my metal tips because what i've also learned is what you can get through one airport with today you may not get through with tomorrow because in a heartbeat they can change their security settings so never rely on what one airline or one airport says my advice is to play it safe and get yourself a couple of sets of tips just for traveling and put all your metal needles in your check-on luggage it's my tip for the day <laughs> um the other thing I wanted to talk about quickly um, before I get on to my whips and my patterns, because there's a lot of those. In my last podcast, I mentioned how some of my DK weight yarns are more comfortable to wear than some of my fingering weight. What I'm talking about is the heat factor, how much, how hot I get wearing one versus the other. And, you know, I sort of, why, why is that? Why is that I can wear a DK um eight ply jersey and not overheat the same way i do when i'm wearing a finger in weight and i had a couple of comments um which is really lovely to hear people's advice and one lady said that um, you probably find that in a lot of cases it's whether it's woolen spun versus um worsted spun yarn so the yarns are quite different and i'm not an expert and i don't don't quote me on anything I'm saying because if you really want to delve deep into this subject, there are experts out there. But I thought I did do a wee bit of research and I took a couple of notes. So the woolen spun is generally loose and lofty. It traps in the air, making it either, it makes it warm but light, if that makes sense. Um, so what it is the fibers aren't combed straight the fibers um, are in a random arrangement and that helps make it lighter and loftier but it also helps regulate temperature and lock in um, heat and make it warmer or cooler but with a woolen spun yarn they're the yarns that you find are a bit more grippy, really good for colour work, and you don't always get the stitch definition that you do if you were using a worsted spun. So worsted spun is when all the fibres have been combed in one direction and they're all aligned in parallel direction. And that makes it smooth and it's like what I'm wearing now. It's... Um, superwash worsted spun it's it's smooth it's probably what i've got to say it's more like like 
lustrous, <laughs> lustrous. Um, but it's heavier and therefore that is why you could feel warmer in a fingering weight worsted spun yarn than if you're in a DK weight woolen spun yarn. <laughs> um, but just, just Google that if it does interest you and it, it does make sense, doesn't it? So, but sometimes you want one yarn like this. I love this yarn for the stitch definition, but it is worsted spun, so it's heavier. It's not as light and lofty as a woolen spun yarn. That's all I'll say on that. <laughs> but when it was really nice just to do that wee little bit of research um, and it does make things um, make a bit more sense when you sort of have more understanding of the structure of the yarn. I get a really dry mouth um, when I do these podcasts. I think it's because I'm not used to just sitting and talking and talking and talking. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pop that away and I'm going to um, start talking about my whips. There's two main whips that I've been working on that I want to share with you. There was something else I wanted to say before I go on to my whips in regards to what I'm wearing, um, this sort of jersey here, which is like a semi-solid. If this is what you like, um, like I said, that's the dark denim, but I wanted to show you these because these are the same yarn. It's the same high twist merino, but this one's called Forest Birds. So I thought if you like green, that's another option. It's a semi-solid, not a speckle. And the other one I've got back in stock is Dark Plum. I almost want to call this Black Doris because it's really rich. It's showing up very well. Ah, there we go. It's a really rich, deep plum. So if blue and denim is not your colour, um, there are some other options. So jump over and have a look at that high twist. Okay. Now onto my whips. Okay, I'll start with my first whip that I was working on on my last episode, and that's the Daily Pullover by Pearl Soho. That's it there. I'll show you this other picture of it because I'm actually thinking I'm gonna do it um, cropped. That's the cropped version. What I love about it is this deep V, and actually they don't call it um, what's it called? A centre double decrease. That's not what Pearl Soho call it, but that's what I know it of. Know of it as. Um, but I, and I love a raglan. So this one's a raglan. Um, I love the fit of a raglan. So that's the daily pop pullover by Pearl Soho. Um, the pattern recommends linen quill, which isn't available um, here. Oh, it might be, but I don't know where it's available. But it's a wool alpaca linen blend. What I've used is Prosper yarn, which is available here. This is dyed here in New Zealand. And this is a 70-30 merino linen. Um, and the colourway is called Depth. No surprises, it's blue. <laughs> I've really got it. I've really got to get away from the blues. But that's the yarn I'm using, and I will show you my progress. I am doing the size four, and um, I'm using a 3.75 mil needle for the body and a 3.5 mil for the bands. I did swatch for this, and that's the needle size I needed to obtain gauge. You do start this with a provisional cast on, Although when I did my cast on, when I cast this one on, I didn't know about the one with it um, on the cords. So the provisional cast on I used was the crochet hook method, which worked fine. And only last night I took my stitches off my provisional cast on, which were on this, the provisional cast on was along this back. So I picked up my provisional cast on and then I've gone down and I've picked up for the V and I am working on the ribbing for my V neck, which you can see. And is it going to show up down there where that pin is? Flip 
that over is where this um, center double decrease will be. So what this pattern is worked back and forth, the front and the, the front left and right and the back is worked back and forth until you reach this V section. And it's at this point you join in the rounds, put your stitches on hold for your sleeves and you work down the body. Um, it's got this beautiful raglan again, raglan deep v-neck. <laughs> so what I did is I worked down until I finished that ball, that one skein of yarn. And now I'm gonna leave the body on hold. I've just got it on cables. I'm gonna leave the body on hold and I'm gonna finish this v-neck, which will only, I should get that finished this afternoon, I hope. And then what I will do is I will pick up and do my sleeves. That is how I prefer to knit a jersey because I find that by doing those smaller details like the sleeve and the band, I'm not working with all that bulk of the body. So I get that top section all done and then the homeward straight is just working on the body. So that's what I am doing. That is my progress and I'm really happy with it. I did say on my last podcast, I don't really like the feel of this yarn in my fingers. And it's, it's I think it's the linen. It feels, I don't know, a little bit ropey. Um, it's probably because I'm used to knitting with merino type yarns. It does feel a little bit ropey. But in saying that, the knitted up fabric is super soft. It's, um, I'm really excited about this. It's... Like I said, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a basic raglan with a deep V neck. But I don't think I've done a lot with that deep V neck. I often talk about liking this sort of neck. I don't like things up here. But the deep V, I think, will be a really nice um, sort of spring, autumn type jersey where it's not too hot, not too cold. But I'm really happy with that progress and I don't think there's really too much else to tell you about that pattern um there is a lot of instructions in here which is really nice I don't I haven't had to sort of go and YouTube any of the techniques um yeah I, I would recommend this for um a beginner maybe a first top down but adventurous beginner um I don't know. I've, it's really funny because um, a lot of people send me messages via this, via my YouTube, but they also send me messages um, via Messenger and in our Facebook community group. And there's a couple of ladies there that have said to me, I've just got back into knitting and they follow me. Um, they haven't knitted for years and they've just started doing their first top down in the round type jerseys. And it just is amazing. I'm amazed at the talent out there of people that haven't knitted for 20 or 30 years that are picking it up today, but they're not picking it up as beginner knitters. They're going right into that color work and that lace work and it's so exciting. There's just some, yeah, it's a really exciting time to be a knitter. So, um, and, and I love that you share that on that community group. It's, I just love seeing what's, um, what's being produced there. The other thing, I wanted to give a shout out. Um, I had a visit from a lady named Erica who was here in Christchurch from, she come from Sydney, Australia, and she popped into my store um, by appointment. I always open by appointment. So it's really nice to meet um, Erica. It's nice to meet someone that had follows me in Australia that has come to visit me. Um, but the other shout out, I want to say hello to Jen in Auckland who um, crossed paths with my husband and he was there on a business trip, completely unrelated to knitting and they got talking and she said, oh my God, I know your wife, I follow her and he said it was a really funny situation and um, so I wanted to give a shout out to Jen. Hi, <laughs> we might get to meet in person one day now that you've met my husband. So um, that was really neat. So my next, actually, I'm just going to put this away and get it or else I'm going to be fumbling. One minute. It actually never ceases, 
ceases to amaze me. Um, I try to be so organized and I'm, I've got notes and I've got all my things around me, but uh, there's always something I forget. So I do try. <laughs> um, my next whip I'm really excited about. Um, actually, I've got it here. I wanted to show you this. This is the large bucket bag. If you love leather, you need to get one of these. They're so big. Um, and I've designed them with a big pocket in front that holds your iPad. But um, And they come in black leather as well. But that is holding this project. I cast on, after my last episode, the Alpine Bloom by Caitlin Hunter. I've done quite a few of Caitlin Hunter Hunter's um, designs. This caught my eye and I knew it was something I wanted to do. I love the relaxed nature of it, the, um, the top down, the yoke, the bit of lace work. Um, and I love this bit of lace work on the sleeve. So I went through my stash. I did not buy yarn for this. I, well, I did at one point, but this yarn came out of my stash. So for the main body, I'm using purple sprouting. Um, this is a New Zealand dyer. And this is 50% merino, 50% silk, which is similar to the yarn that she calls, Caitlin Hunter calls for in the pattern. And the colour that I'm using is called Platinum. And it's from the Astral range. I will leave a link for this below. I photographed this um, and I put it in our Facebook group. And a couple of people, um, it was actually one of my friends even said to me, it looked cream. What colour did you use, Lisa? That cream looks really good. And I'm going, it's not cream. It's grey. It's silver. <laughs> it's platinum. But that's um, the main colour there. And in the colour work for this pattern, it calls for spin cycle, which I absolutely love. But you would need two skeins. And I wanted to use yarn from my stash. Now, I've shown you a couple of years ago, I showed you this yarn as what I was going to use as an alternative to spin, to spin cycle. And a couple of people did say to me, but it's not spin cycle, Lisa, there's no comparison. And I get that and I love spin cycle, but there are alternatives if that's out of your budget. Now for the color work, I've used this. Now, I purchased this yarn. This yarn has been hand spun and hand dyed. And I bought this um, woolen yarn fiber. Um, it's, it's a guild, like the Spinners and Weavers Guild. And they have a shop. Um, they meet here in Christchurch, but they have a shop. And it's at the tannery. So if you're ever visiting Christchurch, I recommend you go out to the tannery. And everything there has been hand spun or hand dyed. And this is just beautiful. And I'm going to show you now how it's come up. Because when I showed my friends, they actually said to me, Oh, did you use Spin Cycle? <laughs> I went, No, this is hand dyed and hand spun. And this is how it's turned out. Isn't it beautiful? So I, I'm just thrilled. And I know that it would be beautiful in spin cycle, but that's that, that's my yarn substitution. I, I just love the pattern. I love this floral design. Um, it starts off with this lace work on the collar, which is really pretty. There's some short rows at the back. I did German short rows. And then you just work the pattern. Um, I have caught my floats. There are some, I, I don't like carrying more than three or four. And there are some that are five, six and seven. So I have caught all my floats. I love to show you the back of my work. Because <laughs> sometimes I think the back almost is as stunning as the front. Not really. So I have divided for the sleeves. I have finished, you finish the color work. So it's all in one, it's all in the round until you finish the color work. And then there's only about three rounds of the main color before you divide there for the sleeves. 
Okay, so that's where I'm at. That's how much yarn I have left out of the first skein. So as normal, what I'll do is I'll finish knitting this, which will only be a couple of rounds, and then I will leave the body and I'm gonna do the sleeves. Now with the sleeves, you can see there how they've got this lace work. So what happens there is you actually knit the sleeve separately and then you graft it on together, which I've never done before. And I don't know how much it excites me because I'm assuming that's going to require something like kitchen that stitch, which I can do, but it's time consuming. Um, but yeah, I've, I've made I've, I've made really good progress. It's colour work, I think, is very addictive. Um, the other the other reason I made such good progress is because, like I said, my husband was in Auckland, so I had three nights, two or three nights, home alone, so I could just sit and knit, and I could sit up as late as I wanted to and just knit, 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 and that's when I got most of this colour work done, over three nights, three days and three nights. But, so that's the Alpine Bloom. Um, I... There's 400 metres on this, and I actually think I'm going to get it out of two skeins. Um, it's a little bit like my Kuta T um, top. I, I'm pretty sure I have got a third skein of this, but I actually think by looking at this, I am going to get it out of two skeins. Um, I picked out a couple in case you were interested in doing it. You may have like you may have the yarn in your stash to do this. If you've got two or three of one colour, and then any variegated or speckled um, indie dyed type yarns would work for this colour work because I've just shown you that I've used hand dyed, hand spun, and it looks stunning. So that colour, that combination there really appealed to me. So this is Yana Dalek, which is a sports weight, and it's called Woman in Blue. And I think that for the main colour, and this one's Californian Surf. So this is in this yarn, my high twist. But I think you could put those together, this for your colour work and this for your main body. And I think it would work beautifully. And the other one that popped out at me was um, same Yana Dalek. This is called Of My Hands which is another beautiful blue, but I think paired up with um, its New York City lights. Now, I want to show you, that's the swatch. So there's actually, it's hard sometimes to gauge from the ball. I'm holding that the wrong way around. But I actually think that combination would be stunning. I think that for the colour work, because there's so much going on in there. There's so many colours that I think the colour work would look lovely. So that's another combination of my hands and New York City lights. But have a look at what's in your stash. It's a really beautiful pattern. And as you know, we're coming into summer here, so I will get wear out of it. But I often have said on my podcast a lot. I wear a lot of my summer knits more in winter than I do even in summer because I wear them over a like a merino base layer um, and I love them. So there we go. I'm so, so happy. Like seriously, that is, I don't know what to say. And even my friends, they, they, say, they said to me, Lisa, it is stunning. I cannot believe you've used hand-dyed, hand-spun. So, I challenge you to go through your stash um, and give that pattern a go. It's really nice. I, I'll have that finished, I reckon, before, um, before my next podcast because I love it that much. I just want to get it off my needles. I bought this coffee cup at a yarn festival I went to and it says fueled by knitting and coffee. And it keeps my coffee hot, like seriously for two hours. And I thought it was the perfect little coffee cup for me, but it doesn't fit in my car. 
I bought one for my friend that doesn't fit in the car either. So, which was really disappointing because why would you make a travel mug that doesn't fit into a standard car cup holder? But anyway, it is good for when I'm at home knitting because I quite often walk away and will come back for my coffee and it's still hot. I'm sure you really didn't need to know that. <laughs> oh dear. Um, okay, so let's. I'm going to talk about some patterns because I do have quite a few and I've got some yarns that I want to knit them up in and some of them will definitely be cast-ons and some of them are just ideas and things I'd love to cast on. I mentioned to you last episode that next year in May I'm going to Canada for Knit City. I'm going to the Toronto Knit City. I'm so, so excited. I'm going to be away for about three and a half weeks. A friend's coming with me. And then my husband's flying in and he's meeting us halfway into the trip. So he's, he won't be there for the knit inside. He's going to go and run. And then we're going to do a bit of a road trip. Um, um, you know, the, um, what's it called? Niagara Falls. And we're going into Quebec City and Montreal. And we're just doing this big loop, big road trip. And I'm super, super excited. But, so what I wanted to do... Earlier this year, was it earlier this year, Noelle from Knits and Pieces from Canada come here and she come and visited my shop and she bought me this beautiful gift and it's a sock set from Leo and Roxy, which is, I think, one of her local um, sort of dyers, yarn producers. And I was like, so thrilled. And it's been sitting there in my baskets in view, thinking, cast it on, cast it on. But as you know, I haven't been doing any sock knitting this year. But I pulled it out the other day because I really want to have these for when I go to Canada next year. I want to have my Canadian yarn, my Canadian gift to wear to Canada. Um, it actually come with the pattern and it's, I think it's their anniversary sock, but you're not going to see much of it there. Um, but the pattern, that's for the main body of the sock, and then you've got your contrast in heel and toe. So I just thought I'd share that with you, because if I put it out there, then I'm more likely to get it done. But, yeah, it's... It's just part of that whole planning a trip and everything I see now is like, oh, Canada, I have to watch that. Or, yeah, it's really exciting. So that is a new cast on that I am going to cast on. Now, I, I got a little bit lost, I got a little bit stuck down that Ravelry rabbit hole and I found some new patterns. Um, and they're not new, new, but... I mean, I'm a fan of fan of Andrea Maori, um, Dre Renee Knits. I've done a few of hers. Um, everyone knows of her. She's just amazing. But I watched one of her podcasts and she was wearing this. And I thought, mm, I want that. Or I might knit it for my daughter because I can see my daughter wearing it more than me, actually. But it's the Traveller hoodie. And, of course, it just looks stunning on her because she's stunning. But I had a look at the pattern and then I thought, I have yarn in my stash for that. And I'm going to show you the yarn. Because if you're from New Zealand, you'll know of this yarn. I have actually started swatching. And it's really just a series of Knit 3, Pearl 3. So I'm doing my swatch in the round. But um, I haven't finished it. But this yarn, so watch, it calls for a sports weight yarn, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so the pattern calls for a sports weight yarn. Now, here in New Zealand, we have a yarn producer called Skeins. They're based up in the North Island. And this is one of their, um, probably one of their most popular brands, but it's the Southlander, which is just 100% New Zealand wool. I think they refer to it as like their workhorse yarn. They're good for everything yarn, just a really good, honest New Zealand wool. Now, these balls, it's quite affordable. This is 200 metres and it's sports weight. And they had a sale, might have been last year. I think they have a sale every year. might have been last year's one. 
and I bought a sweater quantity worth of this, which are, the colour is Bracken. And I also bought a sweater quantity's worth of oatmeal. And I actually really like this colour. It's really quite an earthy, earthy type of colour. And it's, I think it's going to be perfect for this hoodie. So this yarn, I could probably wear this close to skin. It's probably a little bit scratchy. But I think as a hoodie, you wouldn't wear it close to your skin anyway. It would be an outer layer. So um, I really want to cast that on. And I'll do it in a size that will fit me, but will also be a little bit oversized if my daughter wants to wear it. I've never knitted anything with a hood before. But it really is just um, knit three rounds, purl three rounds. That's how, see that pattern there? Is it showing? Oh, that's better. It's really just a series of knit three, knit three rounds, purl three rounds. It's drop shoulder, which I don't often do, but this is something that's going to be super relaxed. So, of course, it's got to be a drop shoulder. And, yeah, a hood with an eye cord, cord through it. So, I purchased that. And I was a little bit, I was a little bit mad with myself because it was only a few weeks ago that she had 40% of all of her patterns. And I had to pay full price. But I will finish my swatch. I've actually done quite a few swatches in the last few weeks. Um, as you'll see as I work through these patterns. But that is the Traveller hoodie by Andrea Maori. It's knitted up in a sports weight or five ply. And I think if you're in New Zealand and you follow skeins, you've probably got some of that in your stash. Everyone I know has South London in their stash. So that is that pattern. Now the next pattern I've also swatched for. I'm not sure if I talked about this in my last podcast. It's a really popular pattern out there at the moment. I mean, everyone's talking about it. Everyone's done it. And it's the Field Sweater by Camilla Vad. That's it there. Top down, yoke construction, lace work. Just a good old everyday sweater with a bit of lace work. Um, certainly, I think it's certainly something that, something that we'll, we would all have in our wardrobe that we would all use. I'm just checking the yarn. So it's a twenty. that's right, it's a 20 stitch gauge. So it's DK, it's done in a DK. Now in my stash, I've been going through my stash a bit because I've had to make um, some changes in my upstairs bedrooms. So I have been going through my stash. A couple of years ago, I had a moment and I jumped online um, without giving it a lot of thought. And I bought a whole lot of Holsk, Holsk yarn, Holsk yarn, super soft. And I bought six cones in six different colors. Um, and I've really got to use it. I've got these cones sitting there. I've really got to use it. So I wound some off and I double stranded it because this is a light fingering weight yarn. The pattern calls for a DK weight yarn. So I wound it off. Um, I wound off the blue, but I also wound off the gray. I had gray and I have double stranded it and I've done this swatch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I've done it in a four and a 4.5. And I think it was, that's the dilemma I was having. So I've got gauge with the four mil, but I actually think I prefer the fabric of the four four point five mil. So if I do the this one, which is, I like the fabric better, um, I'll probably have to, do some maths to adjust my size in. But I haven't decided, but what I have decided is I can knit this jersey in my Holst yarn double stranded. So that was in the gray. And then that's the navy and I haven't decided what color. I might do it in the gray. Um, that blue was just, I, was it, that was single strand of Jameson and Smith. I just wanted to see how it how it 
worked with that. But, um, and as you can see, I did it in the round, so it's very good. So that's the field sweater. Um, have a look at it on Ravelry. Lots and lots of people have done it. Um, click on the projects link and it'll show you everyone's project. Talking about Ravelry, I did mention it before and it is in my show notes. I've been keeping up to date with my Ravelry page and it's Lisa NZ Knitter. Or, yeah, Lisa NZ Knitter. I'll put it down here. So any of my finished objects, you can actually have a look on my Ravelry page at them. Um, but it's really good to have a look at other people's projects. Yeah, it gives you it gives you a really good idea because you get to see them on different body, body types and different yarns and different colours. It's, it's a really good tool if you have not done it yet. Yeah, so all you do is go into the pattern that you like and along the top you'll see... Um, one of your options is projects and it's all also a good ga gauge because some patterns there's thousands so you know it's a really popular pattern and lots of people have knitted it if you go into it and there's only like a couple of dozen or one or two hundred it's like mm, it's not very popular maybe there's a reason for that so yeah so that's the field sweater that i have swatched for and it is a possible future cast on. Now this next one, I showed you my swatch and I told you about how I wanted to do it, but, the, but there's a reason I didn't cast it on and I'll tell you that. So we're still on the Andrea Maori craze here. And this is even full. And there's three colours in this pattern. And it's a slip stitch sort of pattern that creates that. I think it's a beautiful wee jersey. Now, I did my swatch for this using pink, red and silver. Or pink, red and grey. And I got gauge. And I really want to do it in these colours me in pink and red yay <laughs> um the reason i didn't go ahead with casting it on is because i was really low of the pink and this one's called mizzle and this one's called fairy thimble i i was really low on stock i had the red the red's called peggles that's called mizzle and that one's called fairy thimble um, but I've received an order, so I'm fully stocked now. This is the Exmoor sock. Um, there's only 10% nylon on in this. I, I know a lot of people go, oh, sock yarn, it's got nylon. But it's, um, yeah, it's Exmoor, Exmoor blue face, Corridale, 10% Zorbals and 10% nylon. I think Zorbals um, has a short fibre, and a lot of people will argue that it's, not a great yarn but i actually if you have a look at this there's a really beautiful halo to this yarn which you don't normally get on a sock yarn it's not your typical super wash sock yarn and that's why i love using it in garments um i have knitted um the cumulus t in this yarn my friend knitted stripes in this yarn because it's a really good color range as well but anyway, so I'm fully stopped and that's that was my barrier from casting this on. I actually think I'm going to cast this on before the field sweater or the hoodie because I just, I just it just excites me. That slip stitch pattern, the colours really excite me. I really want to knit with some pink and red. So that... Um, that's that. So it's just a fingering weight yarn. It's three colours. Look at the collar there. It looks like a little, it looks like it's Pico, Pico edging. You're not really seeing it. Um, it looks like Pico edging. And on the sleeves as well, it's got that same little Pico edge. It's a really, really pretty little sweater. 
and I think you could do that in the earthy colors like she has there with you know the the blue and the brown but you could go quite bright with it as well as well okay so that's even four by Andrea Maori and I have wound the wool for it the more I sit here and talk about it the more I think I'm going to cast this on this afternoon crazy woman <laughs> maybe not this afternoon but maybe within the next week yay okay oh ah oh. I've got some more new patterns. Okay, tidy enough as I go. <laughs> um, with that Exmoor sock too, I just wanted to say, and I know I've said it in a lot of my podcasts, but you can get these shade cards. So if you're the sort of knitter that likes to plan and you like to see everything out in front of you, these shade cards are $5.50 um, each. And there's one for Exmoor sock. There's one for the Yana Dalek, and there's one for the Apple Door DK. Um, they're five dollars fifty, and then there's this really big set for Jameson, Jameson and Smith. These ones, unfortunately, are thirty dollars, um, and that's there's a lot of swatches in there. Like there's over hundred, there's about one hundred and twenty colours. Um, so these big ones for Jameson and Smith are thirty dollars. I don't put a markup on those, just so you know that. Um, that's actually what it cost me to get them here into the country. So, yeah, shade cards. Really, really handy um, to help you plan. To help you plan if you're doing a bit of colour work. Um, at the beginning of the year, I signed up to Stephen West's Year of Socks. And I've not knitted any of them. But I've been very good... Um, as each pattern has been released each month, I have sent it off to the printer and I've had them printed. Um, the front page in colour and at the end of the year, I'm going to put them into one book. So I'll have a book of amazing Stephen West socks. But for September, Bubbles and Brioche. Now, wouldn't that be exciting? I would really love to do some more Brioche. And no one does brioche like Stephen West. Oh, and Andrew Maori. But that's um, September socks, if you've been following the year of socks. You can buy these individually. Um, as he releases them each month, they become available. Uh, you can buy them either from his web website or from Ravelry. Um, when I signed up, I paid for the year and it was quite discounted. Um I've got a lot of sock for my money. I, I just need time now to knit them. But I'll always have them in a folder to admire, <laughs> if nothing else. Right, that was Bubbles and Brioche. Now, I, I need my notes here. I bought this book a few years ago, The Shetland Trader by Gudrun Johnston. Um... It's a beautiful book. I love it. If you love colour work, um, there's a bit of history in here um, about her mother. Her mother, I think her mother designed most of these patterns and she's revamped them for today um, and popped them into this book. And I just love it. I love her as a designer. What I wanted to say about that is she's just launched a new book. Let me find my notes. Um... And it's published from Liner Magazine, I think. But it's called Grand Shetland Adventure Knits. And it's by Goodwin Johnson and Mary Jane Mucklestone. So she's teamed up with someone else. Now, you may have a local yarn store that does pre-orders or orders um, Liner Magazine. But if not, I've talked about this. There's a bookshop in Wellington here in, here in New Zealand called Minerva Bookshop in Wellington. And it's, she has a really good collection of knitting books and craft books um, in general. If you live in Wellington, you've really got to go to this bookshop. It's amazing. I'll leave the link, Minerva. I emailed her last night and she replied to me this morning. She hasn't got it in yet, but they are arriving. So if you're wanting the latest Goodwin Johnson um, book, it will be available there. But I was admiring all my 
Jameson and Smith yarn. It's so beautiful. You normally see that wall behind me. I've moved today because the lighting's not very good. And I picked up this book because actually I have knitted something out of this. I knitted the beret, the Smora beret. I'll show you. That one there. That's a beautiful pattern. If you want to do, I love a beret over a beanie because you don't get that flat hair. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. But anyway, what caught my eye was this vest. That's it there. And I mean, she's wearing it there really summery, hey, over it. Like you could wear this just over a white t shirt. But it really caught my eye. I thought it'd be quite a quick knit. It's got that beautiful colour work where I'm pretty sure you would only be using carry into at one time. But anyway, it's only four colours. And I played around with the colours, although I had most of them. But I, I've chosen these four colours and I want to knit it. I was hoping to have done a swatch um, of the colour work, a sample swatch before I did this podcast, but I haven't. But they are my four colours. So it's charcoal, there's the natural, this one here is salmon, 9144, and this one is sand, FC45. Now they're the four colours that I'm going to do that pattern in. I, I really want to do some more colour work. Um, and I really want to use my Jameson and Smith because it's just, it's Shetland wool. It just excites me. Let's see. Yeah, so it's pretty similar. What I've done is I've swapped out the grey for the charcoal. And I've got the natural white. And that one there is more of an orange where I've gone for the salmon and the sand. So you can sort of see how those four colours colors would work really well for that so i'm pretty sure this pattern will be available on ravelry on its own i will leave the link below if it is if not it's in this book the shetland trader um and i will i will write down the colors that i've chosen but i mean if if it interests you and you want to do it there's a lot of color there's a lot more colors that you could um that you could do that project in now but we have a designer here in Christchurch named Elizabeth and she goes of the, under the name of Amika here knits and I have talked about her before and her patterns um I just love her work but she has this pattern called Maya it's been out for a couple of years now and it's always it's always sat there in the back of my mind thinking I want to do it. And I think I actually bought the yarn for this. Like I was saying in my stash, I did quite a big order of Holsk yarn and I bought cones, but I also bought a whole lot of the cakes. And I'm pretty sure I bought Holsk yarn to do this pattern, but I've since changed my mind. But I still want to do the pattern. So that's it there short sleeved all over color work there's four colors four colors make up that pattern that original one's done in um happy go nitty marty which um happy go nitty is up in the north island in new zealand she's an in an indie dyer but i want to show you that again see those four colors pink gold gray and like a light grey and a dark grey. Well, these are the four colours that I'm going to do it in. So I've got the gold, the gold in the pink, the light grey or the silver, and I love this colour. It's called Bibblebug. It's a really soft, I don't know, it's I wouldn't even call it a brown. But those four colours, aren't they beautiful? I'm going to do that in. And 
I really want to do this. I think I'm, I'm going to do it even for first, which is the pink and the red in this yarn. And then, and it's not particularly because I really particularly want to use this yarn. It's just that these four colours just jumped out at me to do that pattern. Um, yeah, so go through your stash. If you've got four colours... You probably need 400 metres of each. But you may just have four random skeins there that work well together. You could do this. Do this with me. M-A-I-A. -A, Maya. By Mikahia Knits. And it's by Elizabeth. I will leave the link to that pattern. And I will also let you know the four colours that I'm using. Doesn't that, like, that just looks stunning with them. I, I'm just so happy about that. So that's that. <laughs> I was going to say, I think I'm through all my patterns, but I'm not. I've still, got, I've still got three or four. Three or four to show you. I've got a new designer to share with you. And I could almost call the end of my podcast... Unwind and knit and spin with me. How about that? I've got some spinning to show you, but I'll do that at the end. So my next lot of patterns. Yes. I'm just going to grab a drink. The lights change in here a bit. I think the sun's trying to pop out, which is really nice. Okay. Um, this pattern caught my attention on, uh, might have been Instagram, but it's Stephen West, and it's called the Mingling Daisy Shawl. Now, if you know me, you know I'm not a big shawl wearer. I, I've got a couple of smaller um, shawls and scarves that I like to wear in the winter, but I don't like big shawls. I'm just not aware of shawls. But I have knitted two patterns that I love, and one of them is Pure Joy by Hohi Locatelli and Dotted Rays by Stephen West. And they're, in my opinion, just really nice wearable shawls. They're light. Um, they're, they were a real pleasure to knit, more importantly. And when I looked at this one, I thought this, is, this fits in the same category as Dotted Rays or Pure Joy, as far as the simplicity, um, easy to wear. It's finger in weight yarn. It requires two skeins. It's, um, let me just tell you, I'll tell you what he says, a stitch pattern, it includes broken rib, daisy stitch, and an intricate eyelet pattern, garter stitch, garter stitch pattern, sorry, garter stitch sections, they divide the textured rows, so you've got your mindless knitting, your, your garter stitch in between, um, it's got an eye cord edge, so it's a, a beautiful finish on it. Um, a semicircle shawl. But what I like too, I'll show you this picture. There's no information on that. You can actually see it's just a really nice, easy to wear shawl. It's not too big and, and bulky. And I just thought I had to share that with you. I don't know that I'm going to cast this on anytime soon because I've got other projects. But if you liked your pure joy and your dotted rays, I really think you'd like this mingle in shawl. And this is the yarn that jumped out at me to do it in, if I was to do it. So this colour is called Midnight Sunset. It's high twist. It's 400 metres, so you'd need two of them. And I think this yarn... It's always, it's always really easy to match it up with something that the designer's actually done it in. Um, but this Midnight Sunset, I think, would be beautiful in that Mingling Daisy shawl. And the other reason why I showed you this too is because if you do knit for... Um, if you've got someone special in your life that you knit for at Christmas, I think this would be a really nice Christmas knit that you could start now... Um, two skeins of wool it wouldn't take you too long but I think it would be a really rewarding knit and a beautiful gift so I will leave the link below for that one and the next pattern I've got to show you 
I have topped up on my merino, um, this is my New Zealand merino yarn. This comes in eight colours, but one of the colours is called Agapanthus, but it actually reminds me of a faded, faded blue denim. Um, and I'll show you close up. It's a beautiful merino. It's a beautiful colour. And I, I just want to knit something in it. But my other favourite colour is called Rocky Road. And this is a really dark colour that you can see there. It's got hints of blue and plum. It's a really beautiful colour. And I've wanted to knit something in this as well. Actually, one of my customers knitted um, the Rebel 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 by Truly Myrtle in this, um, and it looked really good. She did say when she was knitting with it that sometimes, although she, w she was knitting in a hot climate and she'd had sunblock on, so she doesn't know if that caused it, but some of the dye come off onto her hands. But she said once she wet blocked it, it's as good as gold. No more dye come out. So it might have just been the heat um, that caused that to happen. But... I really love this colour, Rocky Road. This would be beautiful in a shawl, but jump on and have a look at the eight colours. I'll leave the link below. It's just under New Zealand Merino, this one. But I put it out there that I wanted a cardigan. Um, I didn't want to knit. I've knitted the Rebel Rebel and the Timely by Trolley Myrtle. And a few people suggested those, but I'd already knitted them. And I wanted something different. And a customer, a viewer, I should say, recommended this cardigan. And it's the Helix. Um, what's her name? She has a yarn. She has her own yarn. And she's, she's a very accomplished publisher of patterns and yarn. I can't remember her name. Doesn't matter anyway. But it's the Helix cardigan. That's it there. And you can do a real cropped version or not. It's got really beautiful um, raglan sort of eyelets where the seam is. But the, the other reason I liked this pattern, I wanted to purchase it because there are a lot of options in it. So on the pattern, she gives you the option of that deep V-neck or a round, more cropped neck. Also for the cropped or the long version. So I thought this cardigan has got quite a few um, options. And I think it's a sort of cardigan that you could keep going back to. So I really appreciate whoever um, recommended that pattern to me. And I am going to knit it, I am, I'm going to knit it in the v-neck and probably halfway between a crop and a full length. I love, you can't see it on here as well, so I recommend that you go on to Ravelry and have a look. But on her cropped one, she's got a really thick band, um, a rib. It just looks stunning. So that's what caught my eye was the options with this pattern. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more a lot of other patterns out there that give you all these options but I have now have this one in my possession and I am going to cast it on I'm pretty sure in the agapanthus um, because I want an everyday lightweight cardigan in that color mm, but I like that as well actually these two would look really good in stripes they'd look really good in a timely mm. Yeah, don't, don't get me off. Don't get me started on another tangent. <laughs> I will leave the link to that pattern and I'll also leave the, the link to that yarn. Um, they're, all eight colours are beautiful. There's a pink. There's a like an aquamarine. There's, I can't even describe the colour. There's one called Cottage Garden and and it's blues and pinks. But anyway, jump on and have a look. So that is a cardigan that I want. I want to knit. Um, I'm just checking my list because I've got one more here that I haven't talked about. I told you I'd done a few swatches. 
No one can ever accuse me of not practicing what I preach. <laughs> oh, I've got a paper clip caught in it. So here's my swatch that I did in the rounds. This is a DK weight yarn. And I did it on a US, US 6, which I don't know what that is at the moment. Um, four mil. Now this yarn, once again, is out of my stash. It was dangerous going up and tidying out that room, <laughs> going through my stash. I have 10 balls of this. It doesn't have a ball band. This is a recycled yarn. So this comes from Wild Earth Yarns, which is a mill here in Christchurch. They're the ones that do my yarn, my high twist. Um, they produce some beautiful yarn. But they produce this on their website. It's under, re I think it's just under recycled yarns. I will go on and have a look for it and leave the link. But what they do is my understanding is that they get a whole lot of leftovers that are in the bottom of the whatever it is when they produce in their yarn and they produce this yarn and this is that's showing it up i don't even know how to describe it it's a brown earthy color but there's flecks of like yellows and blues and there's a whole lot of flecks going on of different colors um it's a one of a kind, so if you are going to buy a sweater quantities worth, buy a sweater quantities worth because you won't get it again or it won't look the same. So anyway, I've got my 10 balls, I've got my swatch. The pattern caught my eye first and then when I was going through, I had this pattern and I bought it. And then when I was going through my stash, I thought I paired the two up. So... When I was online and I bought the Traveller's Hoodie by Andrea Maori, this one caught my eye and it's the Weekender Crew. I haven't knitted the first Weekender. I have the pattern and I have the wool for it and I've just never got around to knitting it. Knitting it. But I really liked this and I think I, I heard her talking about it on one of her podcasts because if I've got it right, this one here that she's knitted, she knitted in her hand spun. So that, I was just like, oh my God, that's just, that's just awesome. But it's, um, it's like her first weekender, but she's put little pockets on this one as well. It just feels more relaxed, more sweatshirty to me. That's what it looks like is a, is a sweatshirt with a little, I love the detail of the little pockets. I know a lot of people would, um, wouldn't bother putting those in, but I would. So I saw that pattern. I loved it. Once again, I'd probably do it a little bit oversized. Um, so if I didn't get wear out of it, I know my, my daughter would. Um, and it's a DK weight yarn. And I've got enough of this. And I've got gauge on my swatch. And and I'd like to do that. It's it, it looks like a really basic knit. It's um I think it's bottom up. And then I think you um it's a three need do they call it a three needle bind off on the shoulders? I love the neckline. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure you knit it. Um, knit stitch and then you turn it inside out so that you have the garter stitch is what you see but that's the weekender crew it's a dk weight um yarn and if you've got some dk in your stash maybe you want to give that a go and even not even if you think yeah it's not my cup of tea it's not my style I know from having a 22 year old daughter that if you've got someone young in your life, they'd love that as they would the hoodie. I think it's a sort of sweatshirt that I could pull off if I wanted to, but I also know that I could gift it to um, one of the younger people in my life. So um, once again, we are just so lucky to have um, a designer like Andrea Maori um, in our lives.
I sounded a bit deep, didn't I? <laughs> I'm very grateful to Andrea for all of the patterns that she's designed. I I haven't purchased any of these patterns, but I, I jumped on a rev and I come across um, her name's Jen, Jen Yard, J-E-N Yard, Y-A-R-D, socks. Um, and what caught my eye was actually some fingerless mitts that I'd seen on social media. And I jumped over and had a look in, and in Ravelry, I put her name, Jen Yard, and it's all just socks and fingerless gloves. But in the, it just caught my eye because the colors are amazing. Jump onto Rev and have a look and search her. And even if you think that's no, not my cup of tea, I'd never knit socks like that. Um, it's just worth having a look. It's, it brightened my day. So I wrote that note, note down because I did want to share it with you. The other thing that's caught my eye, and I haven't delved into it to find out about the details, but Tin Can Knits have an app. And I, from my understanding, it'd be really good for beginners or people getting back into knitting. And my understanding is you pick your pattern, you put in your size, and then what is in the app all the numbers in that pattern are just the numbers for you. So you're not having to go through and highlight, you know, normally there's sort of 10 numbers um, and you go through and you highlight your size. And But Tin Can Knit, Knits, um, the app gives you only the numbers for your size. I thought it was really good. I mean, I use Knit Companion and I probably will always use Knit Companion. But I thought if you're you're a bit, you know, you like tech and you like to go on and have a look at those things, have a look at that Tin Can Knits app. Let me know what you think, because like I said, I haven't delved into it too much. I just had a wee peek. Um, I'm going to do a wee shop. Oh, I'll just do this one and then, then I want to talk about my spinning. I have um, Devonia 4-ply. Actually... Two of these would be perfect for that Stephen West shawl, the mingling shawl. I have seven of these left in stock. These are a limited edition, and it's called Wild Damson, um, never to be repeated. It's a beautiful colour. I've got seven left, and I've reduced them from $35 down to $25. So if you want to grab some of these um get them before they sell out there is only one i've reduced this as well that's willow herb there's only one of that color left um but there's seven of the wild damson that would actually be really nice for that shawl if that's your color it's a beautiful purple it's got blues in it it's got little pops of blue and little specks of blue and pink but, yeah, there's seven of those on my website, and they have been reduced. Now, <laughs> this is Unwind and Knit and Spin with me. Hold there. I'm going to get my what I've spun and share it with you. Okay, I hope you're still with me. Um, what I'm going to talk about now is my spinning, and then I'm going to do a shop up update so if that's not your thing and you want to leave now um i get it and thank you for joining me um but i'm going to go on and i'm going to talk about something else so i learned to spin about well, uh, 15 years ago i bought the ashford's traveler um which is a double treadle spinning wheel that has the lazy cage on it it's a beautiful wee wheel i learned to swim spin, well, spin at the local spinners and weavers guild and then I didn't spin for more than 10 years. I never went near it. Um, that building got really damaged in our earthquakes. So my spinning wheel went into the cupboard um, and it didn't see the light of day for 10 years. I did pull it out and I've done a little bit of spinning in the last 12 months. But I got excited for it again. And I think as crafters, we've all dabbled in... If you're a knitter, chances are you've done sewing or patchwork quilting or um, spinning. I mean, we're crafters, right? So um, I think there is a lot of my viewers that will get where I'm coming from. So anyway, earlier this year, I put it out to my husband um, and I said to him, I want an e-spinner. So if you and the kids want to put in 
if they want to know what to get me for my birthday just that'd be really neat um and the reason i wanted a knee spinner is number one it's the size of a shoebox. it takes up very little room number two i um had a back injury a couple of years ago which was which has resulted in numbness in my right leg and my right foot so i do get a bit uncomfortable but i I also thought with an knee spinner, I could probably spin quicker. Um, it wouldn't be such a long process. So anyway, in April, I got an knee spinner and I unpacked it and then it has sat there for months and I haven't gone near it. And then last week, I was just like, I just want to do this. I had a real, real, um, what's the word, desire to do it. So I, I got it out and I got it all ready. I mean, I hadn't even put it together properly. That's how new it was. And I took it away with us because when we went away, as I said, the weather was really horrible and it snowed and we were going to be in this little cabin with a fire. I thought, this is perfect. I'm taking my e-spinner. So I did. I want to show it to you. So it's small. That's it. It's literally like the size of a shoebox. Um, it plugs in here. So you've got a power outlet and then you've got an outlet for your on and off, which is like a little treadle that you would use on a sewing machine. I didn't bring that in, but I actually popped that up on the table beside me and I turned it on and off with my um, hand because it just works better for me because um, I don't like using it as a foot treadle. So I just use it um, with my hands. And it's got the S and the Z, so one for spinning and the other one for when you apply together. It's got a really big bobbin a lot bigger so that was my original size bobbins that I had for my traveler where this one comes with double the capacity I can't remember how many meters they hold but um, anyway that's it it's it's small and it's portable and it comes in a carry bag with a handle and it comes with the lazy cape which is this here and I have been spinning. I've been like this mad, crazy woman wanting to spin all the time. And what I love about this is I can have this set up. And like I got up in the morning, I had my cup, my breakfast and my coffee. And I just sat and spun for half an hour before I went and had my shower. And then I did a little bit more at like when I had my lunch. And then I did a little bit more in the evening. And it seems to be the sort of thing I can just do quickly on a whim where when I had my, my wheel, it, it almost felt like something I had to plan to do. Okay, I'm going to sit and I'm going to get my wheel out and I'm going to spin. Where this is, I can just spin whenever I want. So my first spin is a little bit uneven and it's not perfect, but I love it. So I've been, I bought these packs from Ashford and this is Merino Silk 8020. So it comes like that, it's 100 grams. So this, I can't remember what colour this is called, but it's like a pearlescent. And there it is there. And you can see it's not perfect, right? So what I realised after doing this one, I think my, most of my spin was okay. There was a few bits that aren't great, but I thought I need to ply it I need to put more tw twist in the ply. It wasn't so much my single strand that I spun. It was more when I applied the two together. So that's my first skein. And it's far from perfect, but I'm not disappointed. So this was my second packet of yarn. This one, I kept the bag for this. This one's called Storm. And I pretty well did the same with my spin in, but I put more twist into the ply. And I don't know if you can see, but there's more twist in this one. It's definitely a DK weight. That's my second one. And I'm not, once again, I'm not disappointed. So I've got these two so far. My third one, this is a hundred gram here, is this beautiful blues and aquas. But I am actually going to apply that with this white. 
so and it's going to give me a bit of a barber pole effect right because i'm going to apply the two colors together but i i am really happy with this i'm really happy with the white and i'm just going to try to put a bit more twist into it um so that'll be my third skein see why i'm excited i just want to show you these now <laughs> <laughs> these come out of my stash i haven't bought these recently i bought these like about a year ago i've talked about the spinners weavers guild at the tannery well they um they hand dye a lot of these and this is fifth uh once again this is 3070 merino silks and these are 100 grams and these are hand dyed so i've got this green I've got this blue i've got this gold I've got a purple. I've got a really burnt light. Look at, isn't that gorgeous? I've got that color. And I've got this one, which is yellows and greens. But they're what I've got. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got about 10 skeins. And I've got a project for them. So in my last podcast, I showed you this pattern called Sea Glass by Woolen Pine. Now she has knitted this in scraps of DK weight yarn. And in the pattern it says, any leftovers, just put them together in this pattern. It's a circular yoke pattern. I'm pretty sure it must be, I haven't read the pattern, so, but I'm pretty sure it must be like a slip stitch sort of pattern to get that effect. I showed this in my last podcast and one lady actually came back to me and said, just for you that don't spin, you can actually also use leftover fingering weight yarn held double to do this pattern as well. So this is a scrappy pattern. This is a pattern that you can just go crazy with colour and because what I'm spinning, I counted how many meters I got out of the 100 gram. And it, it's sitting at about a DK weight, DK to worsted. But I am going to keep spinning these beautiful hand dyed, um, I don't know what they're called, slivers, slivers. I'm going to keep spinning and I'll show you my collection of yarn on my next podcast and I want to knit that. How exciting is that? I'm just, um, I'm just really thrilled. I, I'm really thrilled that I finally got my spinner out. It's not a cheap investment. It was something that, like I said, my husband and all the kids put in, um, you wouldn't just go and buy one on a whim um, because they're expensive, but I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. And I just, I'm really enjoying just that rhythm of creating something. I get the same pleasure and satisfaction out of knitting and I will always knit, but there's just something different about spinning. But I think the other thing that excites me is, um, is the process of improving as I go because I think spinning, I've been taught the basics. It's probably not worth me going back to be taught again. I think spinning is just something that you get better with at time, that you perfect it. And and I think that's what excites me is that process of actually creating something and perfecting it. So um, if, you're a sp if you're a spinner, I, I know that you'll un understand what I'm saying. If you're not a spinner, how awesome would it be if I have maybe sparked a little bit of interest for you to go and learn to spin? What I will say here in New Zealand, I know that most cities have a Spinners and Weavers Guild or a Fibre Arts. They have different names. A Fibre Arts Guild. Look them up because you, for, I think in some cases, free. You just go along and there's someone there that will sit with you and teach you to spin. In a lot of cases... There are secondhand um, loan wheels that you can use. Wheels, spinning wheels, I've been told of the sort of thing that at our guild here, 
when someone passes away and the kids go in and clean up mum or grandma's things, they often end up at the Spinners Weavers Guild. They get donated. Um, so it, it, go for it. If you're keen, just go for it. If you can get your hands on a wheel, it's not an expensive hobby. But the actual purchase of the wheel is probably the expensive bit, but, but I also know you can get them secondhand. So that's all I'll say about my spinning. But I, I'm pretty excited. I am going to do a wee shop update. I've told you about the new wool. I have a whole lot here in front of me. I will leave the links um, for all these wools. That's what I was going to tell you. Um, there's a yarn shop in Auckland that I like, and it's called Lupine, Alana from Lupine. And I got one of her emails, and she's doing a Socktober, a knit along for socks. And you just take a photo and put it on, I think it's Instagram. Um, and I'm sure she'll have prizes. But I thought, yeah, if you're sitting there and you want to cast on some socks, um, have a look at Lupines and enter your socks into the competition. You never know. But I have got, I'm pretty well stocked on my Merino Nylon um, sock yarn. So this is an 80-20. Yeah, 80-20. It's local from Wild Earth Yarns here in Christchurch and it's hand dyed here in Christchurch. But here's some of the colours. Um, New Rivers, which is a beautiful dark, a bit of gold in there. New Rivers. Grandma's Rhubarb. This is one of her most popular sock colours, believe it or not. It is beautiful. Grandma's Rhubarb. And I like this one. It's called Deadly Love. Um, and it's got um, gold and grey. And I think all of these could be feminine or masculine. So if you're knitting for your husband or your granddad or your son, especially those two. Um, yeah, there, there's there's something there for, um, there's plenty of sock yarn available. But yeah, Socktober it's called and that's at Lupine. Okay, that was that. I wanted to just do a wee quick shop update on some of my chow goo. That's up here behind me. Because um, I do still get asked a lot of questions. A lot of people have thanked me. I did an episode, three or four episodes ago, where I talked about chow goo because it's quite an extensive range and and there's conf there can be confusion uh, about what to use when. Um, so I thought every now and then I'd just do a wee... Um, just a wee little bit on my chow goo. This is my kit. This is my personal kit. And I started with a small set, um, which gives you all the tips from a 2.75 to a 5. Um, but over time, I've added to it. What I wanted to show you was this black pouch. It's called a black mesh, 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 mesh. <laughs> black mesh pouch. Um, this is listed under chow goo. Um, and this is designed for all your cables. You can put all your cables and your, your end stoppers and all your bits and bobs. But that is actually, actually the ruler fits in there as well. That pouch is designed to fit into there. So if you've got this set, but you've, you've got cables all over the place, um, that's it there. Invest in a black pouch. It's really handy. The other pouch... This is an empty pouch, and it's just called Accessories Pouch Yellow. This is it here, and it's a smaller pouch. And it's got a little zip there. Fits bits and bobs, but this pouch will fit into that front zipper. Now, in mine, I'll pull it out. They're the same size. You can buy this empty and it fits into that front zip. Or this is my shorty set. So if you're really going all out and you invest in, there it is there. That's a little shorty set that has the two inch and the three inch. That, this is the red set and then there's the blue set. 
the red sets um, for you only goes up to, I think, a 3.75. And then your blue set goes, I think, from a 3 point maybe this goes to a 3.5 and then a 3.75 up to a 5. But this is the red set. This fits into there. And I think this is really important to know because Chowagu are quite a big investment. It doesn't seem like a big investment if you buy bits and pieces over time, which I've done. But I think what's really important to know is it all fits into that one pouch. It's it's a tidy system and I can travel anywhere and that's all I need to take. Um, if by chance, and I know some of you have, you've been buying your chow goo in pieces. So instead of start, starting with a $200 set, you've bought the tips and the cables as bits and pieces. You can buy this pouch separate, um, empty. And it's called the interchangeable needle case. So it's it's actually this. And it's got all the slots for needles from a 2.25 right through to about a 10. So that's the empty pouch. That's the empty black mesh pouch. And that's the yellow accessories pouch. So... I just thought I'd put it out there. <laughs> um, some people do still ask me how I keep how I keep my needles um, and what sort of needle system I use. Well, that's pretty well it. Um, I have these. I call them stalk scissors. <laughs> They're embroidery scissors. These have been in my notions pouch for five, six, seven years. I love these little scissors. They're fine. They just, they're very sharp, but they're fine. Certainly don't travel with them. They'll confiscate them at an airport in a heartbeat. Um, but if you like these little ornate scissors and haven't known where to get them, they're on my website. Also, um, the Euclid will wash. There's a hundred... 100 mil and then there's the big 500 mil this is the wool wash i use for all my garments for all my wet blocking you soak your wool actually i even used it for my hand spun i have soaked this and yeah but you don't need to rinse it out so you just soak your garments or whatever you're wet blocking and then when the water cools you come along you wring the water out that's it um or you know you gen I roll my things up in a towel to get the water out. Um, you don't need to rinse this out. It comes in a couple of different fragrances. Um, the rainbow, rainbow combs. This is what you need for blocking your garments. I have shown you the, these before, but I'm all fully stocked up with those. They're just called knit blockers. And the other thing was my hand creams. I have all those in stock. So there's the cream. It's actually called Knitter's Balm. But then there's the bar. And the bar is the one that you take out and rub between your hands. The bar is quite heavily fragranced. Smells beautiful. But the balm is being designed for people with eczema or psoriasis. Um, it's a really rich moisturising cream. But there's no fragrance in it. And, and that's why, because it's been designed um, for very sensitive dry skin. Right. <laughs> I think I've just about covered everything. I hope that you don't mind that I've put that little bit in at the end about my spinning. It's, um, it is part of my knitting. It's part of my craft and... Um, and I really want to share it with you. It's like a wee little journey. It's certainly not going to change how much or, or, or my knitting. Um, and who knows, I might get bored with it and it may go back in the cupboard for another couple of years. But at the moment, I'm really quite passionate about spinning all that. Um, it's not yarn, fleece. Spinning what I've got. And I'm... I'm not going to waste it. I am actually going to spin with a purpose, and this is my purpose. Um, and I think that's really important. Like, 
don't just sit there and spin for it to sit there and not do anything with i did do some spinning i think it was earlier this year and like this it wasn't great it was a little bit bumpy in places um but i knitted it into a beanie i think it was that was called the m hat yeah um i might show you that one on my next podcast um so my point is it won't go to waste if it's not good enough or consistent enough for a jersey you can always knit it into a beanie um and it has that special story not only did mum knit this but she actually spun it as well yeah all right um thank you for sharing all this time with me i really appreciate it i know there's a lot of podcasts out there and if you've chosen to um spend your time with me i really really appreciate it please always subscribe give it the thumbs up you can leave comments or messages i do get back to everybody um if you've got knitting friends share with them um i am where am i, I think i'm 2700 my, my goal now is like the next number i want to achieve is 3000 subscribers so who knows maybe between now and Canada wouldn't it be good if I reached that number before I go to Canada yay anyway thank you very much everyone stay happy stay healthy I hope you get lots of knitting done and I will be back here in I've always said two weeks but it always seems to be three two to three weeks I will be back um, if you're in Christchurch and you want to come to my shop all you have to do is flick me a text or a call all the details are on my website um, I'm always here to open by appointment if you can't make the Saturday 10 to 2. All right, everyone. Thank you. And I'll see you all soon. Bye.